Ani vushu korang kwen dash na kas ma ko ndorem wen chi ma ji chwan kitch kami sim dun chiba. Hi, my name is Lindsay Morkum. I'm a mixed heritage in Shinabe Kwe and a member of the Bear Clan and Ardak Algonquin First Nation. Before I begin, I'd like to acknowledge that my home in Kingston is on the traditional and current territory of the Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee people. I'll be talking today about urban language revitalization. It's extremely important because the majority of Indigenous people in Canada live off reserve in urban centres. Living off reserve is a risk factor for language loss, as indicated by the fact that 45% of First Nations people on reserve are able to conduct a conversation in an Aboriginal language, compared to only 9% off reserve. Urban language revitalization tends to be grassroots. Locally, the Kingston Indigenous Languages Nest, or KILN, offers opportunities to access language and culture. One way that happens is through weekend family-focused sessions in various languages. Using qualitative data collected through talking circles, I explore what effects the weekend sessions have on participants' lives. As one of the organizers of KILN, I worked with the rest of our leadership team to develop questions that were relevant to KILN and the community. I recorded data through two talking circles with community members. This research methodology is not only effective, but also culturally appropriate. I then analyzed the data for themes and quantified recurrences. Unsurprisingly, language was by far the most salient code. New learners were able to grow in their language knowledge and use, and more fluent speakers were able to practice and share their language knowledge, sometimes after years of disuse. That was really important in helping speakers move away from the shame they often felt about their languages and cultures because of experiences in Western society and Western education. By learning together, participants were able to expand their domains of language use. They used their languages more at home and in the community. They were inspired by one another because they saw progress in each other and were mutually supportive as like-minded language learners. They also found a, felt accountable to one another to remember what they had learned at sessions and keep developing on their own. Kiln's language pedagogy is unapologetically Indigenous. It's holistic and multi-generational. To reach both children and adults, learning is play-based and participants are able to celebrate the knowledge that people of all ages bring. In the case of young children, even when they didn't participate fully, families still saw growth in their language and cultural knowledge after sessions. Participation allowed for the development of a positive language ideology or beliefs and values surrounding language. As anthropologist Sarah Shulis points out, beliefs about language are never only about language. Participants questioned the idea that language and education should be about jobs and opportunities. For them, the value of language was much deeper. Participants saw language learning as key to cultural connectedness. That helped them resist assimilation, which is very difficult in urban contexts, and to cope with racism. As one participant said, culture is really important for raising children because when you face racism in your life you have your culture, and you have your culture behind you, you'll be able to withstand and recover and be resilient much better. Spirituality is an important aspect of culture. Kiln sessions are done according to Indigenous protocols and involve spiritual ceremonies and teachings. For some, this presented an opportunity to learn about others' beliefs and decolonize their own. For those who practice traditional spirituality, it offered a chance to connect and share spiritual knowledge. Participants observed that during sessions, they not only performed Indigenous culture and spirituality, but also lived it by honoring medicine wheel teachings and the great law of peace, connecting to holistic wellness based in traditional medicines and foods, and reminding themselves of their connections to land and their human and other than human relations. Learning about culture strengthened participants' identities. Many Kiln participants are of mixed heritage and are separated from what is viewed as an Indigenous way of life through urban dwelling. Kiln allowed them to overcome shame that had led many to keep their heritage a secret. They came to see their indigeneity and their mixed heritage as a gift. Community acceptance was central to that identity building. Acceptance validated their identities and strengthened their connection to their cultures and communities. It allowed them to share common experiences and to connect to like-minded people and to grow in their understandings of what it means and looks like to be Indigenous. Participants recognized Kiln Sessions as conscious community building. Through participation, both those who were new to the city and those who were new to their Indigenous cultures found a place to belong and create connections. They reaffirmed existing kinship and clan ties while also building their own unique community. They saw identity and community development as inextricably connected. The Kiln community is diverse and the participants saw diversity as something to be honored. 
The two languages that are taught most often, Nishnabe Mon and Ganin Geha, are unrelated. So participants learned how diverse Indigenous languages and cultures are, what commonalities they hold, and why they should be considered equally wise and equally valuable. By placing equal importance on both languages of the territory, participants came to see the Dish with One Spoon Treaty, which governs this land, as a way of life rather than a historical event. They were reminded that colonial borders are superimposed onto previously and still existing Indigenous territories. They understood that pan-Indigenizing oversimplifies the diversity of Turtle Island. Language revitalization on urban lands also reaffirms the connections to, pl connections to place by allowing community to come together and create a visible, unmistakable Indigenous presence in the city. That connection and presence validates the urban community as an Indigenous community in its own right. That presence undermines colonial assumptions about Indigenous peoples belonging in cities and the placement of cities on Indigenous lands. It questions the assumption that Indigenous land is limited to reserves. It reminds us all that urban spaces are Indigenous land too, and that Indigenous people have the right to belong, exist, and claim space and place in cities. As the studies demonstrated, urban language revitalization ensures that urban Indigenous people, who at this point are the majority of the Indigenous population, have access to the languages that are their birthright. However, it's about much more than language. Urban language revitalization helps develop personal identity, spiritual and cultural connections, and a positive localized urban community. Urban language revitalization contributes to decolonization and reaffirms Indigenous connections to land as well, um, in cities as well as in rural areas. With ongoing Indigenous urbanization, leading initiatives like KILN will be increasingly central to the survival of our languages and cultures and the development of new, unique, and beautiful ways to be Indigenous. Miigwech.